Hello there, my name's Andy. I'm technique editor for Digital Photo Magazine and welcome to this Photoshop Masterclass video in which I'm going to be talking to you about adjustment layers. And in this technique, I'm going to be showing you how you can use nothing but adjustment layers to give your image a complete overhaul, turning an average shot like this. It's a, a long exposure shot, shot in Kyoto, Japan. There's some nice traffic trails going along here and here. Those areas are pretty interesting, but I've got this sort of dark line running through the middle. The colors here are a little bit washed out and lackluster. I wanted to give this image a real kick. So with adjustment layers, I was able to transform it from this shot into this which is far more vivid, it's far more bright, there's a range of different colors going on in here and I've intentionally overexposed those traffic trails to bring a bit of dazzle into the points of light in the shot. So to show you how I did this, I'm going to close down the finished image now and we'll open this shot. You'll find it in the Start Images folder, it's called river.jpg. Double click it and when it appears on screen, if it's not full size, if it looks like this for example, you can hit Control and Zero to make it full size and you're also going to want to be able to see your layers panel which is this thing over here on the right so click on window and make sure that layers is ticked and you'll see your layers panel on the right hand side with one layer in there called background in italics and it should have a little lock next to it okay so the first thing we're going to do is add an adjustment layer so where are they hidden? well in Photoshop and this tutorial is for the full version of Photoshop so we're talking CS5, CS6 or CC at the bottom here you'll find a half light half dark circle click on that icon once and a menu will appear and from inside that menu we're going to select levels in the properties panel that's opened up you can see a histogram that represents the shadow data on the left hand side the mid-tone data in the middle here and the highlights data on the right so you can see a little spike on the right that'll be caused by these traffic trail highlights and the street lights we're pretty low in mid-tones that's because there's lots of lights and darks in this image but few mid-tones perhaps around here in the wall you can see some mid-tones and then a big peak here in the shadow area because a lot of the image is still in shadow so we're going to change that a little bit now you could drag these sliders around manually but I've done some experimentation so I'm going to type in the values that I want in this leftmost box I'm going to type 2 and that's going to lift my shadows a little bit in this middle box I'm going to type 1.32 and that's going to lift my midtones a little bit and then in this rightmost box I'm going to type in 251 so I've just revealed a little bit of extra data in the darkest areas if I close this properties panel and use this little eye icon here to turn off the visibility of that layer you can see the difference we've made off there's very few mid-tones in the image and it's quite dark in places on we've raised a lot of those shadows we've lifted a lot of the shadows and revealed a lot more detail it's starting to look better but there's plenty more we can do so let's go back to that create new fill or adjustment layer icon down there click it once and from the menu we'll select curves this time now curves is great for making exposure contrast and even color adjustments and for a full rundown on this tool you can check out the Photoshop masterclass from the March 2016 issue of Digital Photo where we go into quite a bit of detail on what this can do for now though we're just going to click once on this diagonal line to create an edit point and we'll drag that up now the top right of this line is dealing with the highlights and the bottom left is dealing with shadows so it's a bit like levels in that respect only we've got more control here I'll click again in the shadows area at the bottom left here to create another edit point and drag that down now what I've created here is known as an S-shaped curve and that's used to increase the contrast in your shots you make the highlights brighter and the shadows darker you increase contrast because it's quite a dark image I think I want to pull up the highlights more than I pull down the shadows so I want my S-shaped curve to sort of sit a little above the diagonal line and uh, it'll depend on the the brightness settings of your monitor and the calibration of your monitor uh, this may look slightly different on your screen than it does on mine but I think something around there is looking good to me for the next step we're going to create a third adjustment layer so click that icon again and this time select vibrance the top slider here vibrance will increase the saturation of the colors that need it most and it will also protect skin tones if there are any people in your shots so we'll drag that up to plus 50 or thereabouts now this slider the saturation slider will just increase the saturation across the board and it doesn't do so in the same sort of smart way so if you pull it up too high things start to go south very quickly and that looks particularly ugly so we don't want to do that um, I'll try and keep this minimal I'm gonna move it up to about plus 16 somewhere around there looks good 
but I only want this saturation to affect the river. I don't particularly want it to affect the trees because they're going a little bit of a, a sickly shade. But luckily for us, there's already a layer mask attached to each of these adjustment layers. So all we need to do is paint black into this layer mask and the effect will vanish essentially. Now you've got to make sure the layer mask is selected so you can see these little white lines around the white rectangle. That means the layer mask is selected. If I click here, that means that the adjustment layer is selected. If I click here, that means the layer mask is selected. So with the layer mask selected, I'm going to select my brush tool and with a black, soft, round brush, make sure your foreground color is black. You can do that by hitting D on your keyboard and then X to flip them. And let's make that a little bit bigger. And now let's just start to paint out the trees. So paint over the trees with your black brush and Obviously you won't see any black appear because what you're actually doing is painting black into the mask. So you can see the top left corner of the mask has gone black and that means that the top left corner of this layer is hidden. The bottom is still showing, the bottom is still visible, but the top is becoming hidden. Every time I paint black, I'm hiding the effect. That's how layer masks work. Black hides and white reveals. So I'll paint over these trees in the sky. And once I've done that, I can turn the visibility of this layer off and on and you can see the difference in the colors in the river. Now I still think those colors are a little bit uh, are a little bit unpleasant to look at so I want to work on those a little more. Let's do that with a hue saturation adjustment layer. So click the icon one more time and this time select hue saturation and in the properties panel you'll see a hue slider, a saturation slider and a lightness slider. What we're going to do is just change the hue and we'll drag that to minus 14. And that's given the colors in the river a, a nicer tone. I, I think I prefer this look to the old look, but the trees have gone a, a bit of an odd shade of brown. So once again, I only want this effect to show in the reflections in the river. I don't want it to show in the trees. So let's paint over the trees with that black brush and immediately you see that hue effect vanish. I'll just get this out of the way by clicking on that little cross and then continue to paint over the trees and restore their original color. So if I turn the visibility of that layer off and then on again, you can see that I've created a nice warm, rich orange and an attractive shade of sort of cyan in the river, which I prefer to the old colors, which were a little bit off and not quite as I remembered them. And bear in mind here, in photography, you're always trying to recreate the feeling of when you took the shot so that you can replicate that feeling in your viewer. Okay, let's go back to the create new fill or adjustment layer icon, click it one more time, and this time we'll select color balance. Now this is going to allow me again to fine tweak the colors in my shot to my liking. So let's move that top slider to minus seven. If you find it tricky to drag that slider around, you can simply type into the box next to the slider. So in the next one, let's type in minus five, and in the last one, we'll type in a nine. I'll just close these properties panels and show you the difference we've made there. By turning the visibility off, I've got this, and turning it back on again, I've got this. So what I've done there is change the color of the sky slightly, and I've also pulled a little bit of the yellow out of those trees so they look a bit more natural. So the purpose of that adjustment layer was just to change the color of the trees and make them slightly more green, a, a color that I prefer. So if you want to, you can actually mask out that color in the river and just have it only affect the trees. But on this monitor, it doesn't look too bad to me, so I'm just going to move on to the next step. So next, I'm going to add a photo filter. So we go back to click on that icon and we'll select photo filter from the menu. I'm going to click on where it says warming filter brackets 85 close brackets and from that menu I'll select deep yellow. I'll leave the density at 25% and I'll make sure that preserve luminosity is ticked and I'll close those panels and show you the difference we've made there. We've gone from this to this. So I've warmed up some of those colors, made it look a bit more of an inviting scene and a bit less cool. And next I'm going to try to create a vignette but because the center of my image is quite dark, I'm going to try to create a vignette, not by darkening the edges, but by lightening the center. So we'll go back to that adjustment layer icon, and this time we'll select curves again. But instead of playing with the highlights and shadows as we did last time, I'm gonna click in the center and just drag up the mid-tones. And I'll, I'll just move this to the side so you can see the difference we're making to the image. 
and I'm just going to drag the midtones up until the center of the image looks right. I know the edges are becoming overexposed, but I'm going to deal with that later, so I'm just looking at the center for now. Okay, that's looking nice and bright, so how do we deal with the fact that the edges of the image are overexposed? Well, the easiest and quickest way is to use this. It's called the Gradient Tool, and you can get to it by clicking this icon or hitting the G key on your keyboard. And once that's open, we've got black and white, which is perfect, but we've got a linear gradient, and what we need is a radial gradient or a round gradient. So click on that one, leave the mode as normal, leave the opacity at 100%, and just make sure that reverse is ticked, and then click in the center of your image, and then drag out towards the tree, and then release the mouse button. And there we have it. If you look at the mask, you can see what's happened. The middle of the mask is white, and then it gradually becomes black towards the edges. And that means the middle of the adjustment layer is showing, and then it gradually stops showing or becomes hidden towards the edges. So the middle of the shot has raised midtones because I just pulled the midtones all the way up, but the edges of the shot have not changed because the effect is being hidden by the layer mask. So if I turn this layer off, the center of the image is dark. If I turn it on, the center of the image is brightened. We're nearly done now, but there's a little more tweaking I'd like to do. Now, I want to change the hues, but rather than go back to the hue adjustment layer that I've already created, I'm going to create a new one on top of these layers, because the layer order is very important to the final look of the image. If you swap the order of these adjustment layers around, the effect on the image will change. So let's click on that icon once again, and we'll go to hue saturation. Now this adjustment layer again, I want it to affect the water because I'm not so keen on this yellow color in the water, but the trees are good. I don't want to affect the trees. So I'm going to drag that slider down to minus 10. And now I've got a nice orange in the water and a, a nice cyan color, but I don't want the trees to go this odd mustardy color. So once again, with my black brush, I'm going to paint over the trees and the top half of the image and just leave the effect in the water at the bottom of the image. So I've gone from this original to this much more attractive version. We're nearly there now. I think just one more layer is going to do it for me. So I'll click on that icon again, and I'll click on Vibrance once again. This time I'll drag the Vibrance slider up to plus 41. There we go. And I'll drag the saturation up a tiny bit to plus 5. There it is. Let's just minimize that and close that. And if I turn the visibility of that new adjustment layer off, and on, you should be able to see a difference in the sky and in the colors in the river. Everything's just become a little more vibrant and now the image has a little more pop to it. And right about there, I think I'm done. I'm just gonna turn off the visibility of all of the adjustment layers by holding down the Alt key and clicking on my original background shot, which looked like that. And then do the same again to turn them back on. And that's the difference. The original shot straight from camera and then the enhanced version. And yeah, I think my new version has a lot more impact. So all that's left for me to do now is go up to File, and then click on Save As, and then save my image as a JPEG with a new name. The JPEG format will flatten all of these layers for me, and it will create a nice compressed file size so I can upload it to Flickr or 500 pixels, or email it to my friends, or do whatever I want with it. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this Photoshop Masterclass video on adjustment layers. Feel free to try it on our image, and then have a go on one of your own images. And when you've created an effect you like, be sure to send your shot to us at dpimages at bowermedia.co.uk. We always look forward to seeing your shots. Okay, thank you for watching. I'll speak to you again next time. Bye-bye for now.